Hi there. This is just a short video that I want to do with regards to Sister Donna's dream that she had. I'm calling it False Signs and, and Wonders. Um, it's uh, a dream that I mentioned in my video that I uh, did called Acts 2.0 True Revival. And uh, my friend Stacy told me that Sister Donna posted a dream on her channel, the Servant of God channel. And she was asking whether somebody has the gift of interpretation. And that's how Sister Donna and I met because I interpreted this dream for her. But it's just time is how this dream came at a time um, with regards to um, with Father, what Father was showing me as well. So I want to do a separate video so that she can use it for whatever purposes she sees fit to use it for. Um, but I also think it's important enough to do a separate video and not just mention it in my devotional teaching. So I'm going to uh, just relay the dream in first person as she shared it as well. And then I'll give the interpretation. She says, in the dream, I am riding in the back of a car. My son is in the car with me and I'm showing him my right hand. I'm showing him that on every finger there is a knot. He says, yes, I see them. There are five. And I say, Pay attention to the five, and he says he will. He takes out a cigarette. Now, my son does not smoke. And I say to him, you know, I don't allow any smoking around me. I never have. And he said, you are to pay attention to six. It is six, and it is time for burning and fire. But you are to pay attention to six. And I say, I will. I will pay attention to six. He hands me a key and I take the key and I ask, what am I to do with this key? And he said, anything that you want, you can do with this key. And then we meet up with some, I meet up with some people and I'm asking them, does anyone interpret dreams? Now I'm, I'm in a dream telling them about this dream that I'm having. And they say, yes, there is one person here and he can interpret dreams. And he walks up to me all dressed in black and even has on a little black hat. And he said, I interpret dreams. Tell me your dream. And whilst I'm telling him of the dream about the five knots on the fingers and the sixth meaning burning and fire, I start seeing him looking like he is dizzy, swaying back and forth. And he starts to speak in tongues and falls over into a ditch to vomit and he never interprets the dream. And I stand up and I tell the people that are watching, do you see that? And they say, yes, he's speaking in tongues. And I say, I want you to know something that is not tongues. There is a tongue in a language that the devil can mock. That is what he is doing. He is mocking the tongues. One of the men stands up and says, you would know, Donna, wouldn't you? And I say, yes, I would. I know that that is not tongues. I know there is a language that the devil can mock, and that's what he is doing. He is vomiting up the spirit that is in him. It is an unclean spirit, and it is being vomited up. And everyone says, it's time to sleep. And I lay down and I say, I'm not sleepy, and it's not time for me to sleep. And they say, Cover up your head anyway and make it look like you're sleeping. So I cover up my head like everybody else is and I hear the Holy Spirit saying to me in the dream, Donna, be aware. Donna, wake up. And I say, my Lord, I'm not asleep. And when I uncover my head beside me under a blanket is something standing up. And I am warned by the Holy Spirit of God to take a hold of it and when I take a hold of it, it's a snake. And it's a big snake. And I grab the serpent by its tail. And everyone is screaming, the serpent will bite you. And the serpent in my hand is trying to walk, talk to me. And I am warning the people, don't listen to the serpent. He will try to charm you. Don't listen to him. And I take the serpent and I swing him around three times. I throw him to this field and he stands up. He's looking at me and I am looking at him. And then he runs as fast as he can, going back down on the ground. 
He's moving so fast through the grass. And I warn the people, he is not done yet. So that was her dream. So here with the interpretation. The car in your dream speaks of a person's life, a journey or ministry. In this case, it speaks of your ministry. You and your son are in the back seat while someone else is driving. The driver would be the Holy Spirit that is in control of your ministry. Your son represents Yeshua speaking to you. He is the son. A person's right hand speaks of power and authority. And this is why Yeshua is at the right hand of the Father. All authority and power belongs to him. He also upholds us with his right hand. In this case, your right hand with the five knots on each finger represents the authority given to the fivefold office of apostle, prophet, teacher, evangelist, and pastor. We say tie a knot into it or to it when we want to remember something. You are saying to him that he must remember them. And he says he will. In other words, he will take care of them. The fivefold ministry all have a shepherding function in that they are to care for the flock. How they care for the flock differs according to their office. They have been given this authority to take up serpents. Your son smoking and you saying that you do not allow any smoking is showing your disposition towards smoke. This smoking is pointing towards that which is a smoke screen or it's all just smoke and mirrors. A reference to magicians who use smoke and mirrors to deceive. The number six is the number of man. Where you asked him to pay attention to the five knots, he is now saying, remember the sixth. Take note, the sixth that will rise up. It will be of man and not of the spirit. The key given is your authority to open or bind in the spirit. Keys represent authority and we have been given all authority in our office over all the power of the enemy. The next scene in your dream is showing you the sixth finger so to speak. This is showing you that something man-made is rising to deceive many. It has to do with burning and fire. The connection here with regards to burning and fire is twofold. The fire points to the outpouring of the Spirit on people with the evidence of speaking in tongues and signs and wonders, which we read in Acts 2, that came as tongues of flames on them. In this you have the correlation of tongues and flames. The other connection with regard to burning and fire is that of desires. Desire is as a flame that burns and many are drawn to outward manifestations. They are drawn to signs and wonders where Yeshua said that it is a wicked generation that seeks signs and wonders. This feeds the flesh that craves to feel the anointing and feeds the longing to feel his love instead of living by faith. They seek the things of God but not him. How subtle the enemy is in deceiving father's children by using their longing to be close to him. The man is dressed in black and has a black hat on. The black speaks of deception or darkness. The word says that those who walk in the light will not stumble in darkness. The black hat speaks of his mind being in darkness. Yet he believes that he can interpret your dreams, so he's deceived. This brings me to further understanding with regard to the sixth finger. Many believe that because they receive dreams and visions or interpretations, that they are in some kind of office or in authority. Usually they think they are prophets. It is a means by which the enemy ensnares them, believing that the gift constitutes being right in their walk and that they have authority. They depend on their gift and measure themselves by their gift. They would, const they would constitute those placed in authority by man, the number six, and not by God. Becoming dizzy and swaying speaks of becoming drunk in the spirit, but this is not the spirit of God. 
This is the Kundalini spirit we see even with the Indian people and in other religions where they too speak in tongues, but obviously demonic. They also sway in the spirit and look drunk and speak in demonic tongues that sound exactly the same. However, only those with the Spirit of God will discern the difference. Vomiting out is also a manifestation that will take place, as even this too people are drawn to, to see deliverance. But also, but often this deliverance is not lasting because their minds, the black hat, is not renewed. The stronghold remains. The snake will return. Falling into a ditch, ditch speaks of his true state and you warn them which is your authority given to you the people telling you to sleep who also believed in finger number six tells you it's time to sleep they represent the sleeping church and rightfully you are telling them you are not sleepy and that it's not time to sleep i believe what they were saying to you is let's not get carried away donna god has done a good thing here let's cover it up and go to sleep being awake, which you tell the Holy Spirit you are, is the right disposition, of course. You cover your head and oblige them by making it as if you are sleeping. This, for me, is you being undercover to see what the enemy is doing, but also represents how the sleeping church will want to affect those in office, the five fingers, to cover their heads, heads representing authority over the church, and not say anything about these manifestations. The Holy Spirit saying to you, be aware, Donna, wake up, is the Spirit saying to those in authority to wake up and warn his people of the coming deception in the revivals that will start to pl take place all over. The moment you uncovered your head, lifting the veil, so to speak, you could see the veiled spirit, that which the sleeping church and veiled church could not see. The standing up of the snake is a position of war standing up against the true five fingers of God. This is why you take hold of the snake with your hand, representing the fivefold ministry's function and authority over the enemy. Grabbing him by his tail is to render him helpless as a snake cannot do much when you do so. This all points to the magicians in Pharaoh's court, where Moses, who wrote the first five books of the word, representing Yeshua, was given a staff to cast it down on the ground that turned into a snake. The magicians were called with their smoke and mirrors and produced their snakes. We know, of course, Moses' snake devoured them. The people react in fear, which is their res response with regard to those of the fivefold ministry that is called to stand up against this deception in the church, wanting them rather to put down the snake lest it bites them. They fear more what the enemy can do than fearing God who has all power and authority and has indeed crushed the enemy on the cross. The cunningness and deception of this serpent is within the church and is directly linked to a religious spirit, more specifically Jezebel, that will come against his servants. Do not listen to the serpent, he will charm you, also reminds me of Joseph and Potiphar's wife. He did not have a long conversation and tried to deliberate with her, but he ran from her. We are to flee from temptation. What we are finding now is that people are running after signs and wonders, the serpent charming them to see God coming as an angel of light. However, they are led astray by their burning and fire within their bosoms for that which is not lasting, that which appears true but is in fact dangerous. Swinging the snake around three times speaks of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit in which in whose authority you are doing this swinging and casting the snake away from his children, much like David did with his slingshot. And we know he will be back, which means this is an ongoing war of deception and that you are warning the church, which is what the five fingers should do, that they are to be aware because the snake will return. I'm reminded of the scripture where Paul was bitten by the snake and just shook it off in Acts 28. Everybody thought he would die, but Paul knew his authority. You will note in that chapter that the barbarous people made a fire. 
This fire reminds me of the strange fire that our God will not accept because he is seeking those who will worship him in spirit and truth. Note that a viper comes out of the heat. The people thought ill of Paul, saying that he must be a murderer. This speaks of persecuting those who come against these false signs and wonders. Interestingly enough, the word barbarous in the Strong's Concordance is G915, and it means one who speaks a foreign or strange language which is not understood by another. The viper is G2191, and it refers to being cunning and offspring of vipers, whom we know are the Pharisees, once again pointing to a religious spirit. And that is the interpretation of Donna's dream. Please uh, watch my devotional called Acts 2, 2.0 True Revival that will give you further context as well. Pray you will take this to the Lord and just see um, what Father is showing you personally as well. Bless you.